glad that you are here today. We have so much to say and express and we believe that you will be experiencing it in our service. We hope and pray that you will enjoy God's presence, power and his freedom. The Ark is a multicultural and interdenominational church. Our mission is transformation of life by creating hunger for prayer, word of God and worship. We believe that smaller discipleship groups are as important as the larger Sunday gathering. The Ark is also a missions focused church. We carry a heart to reach out to every district of our nation with the love of Jesus. A major part of our tithes and offerings goes towards supporting the poor and to take the message of hope across the nation of India. All throughout this pandemic, we have been reaching out and supporting the needy with food, medicines and hygiene kits. We encourage you to engage with us in the live chat. We would love to know you and pray for you. So church, let's get ready and open our hearts to worship the Lord and wait with an expectation for the powerful word that our pastor is going to bring today. For any other information, please feel free to reach out to us on the number that is flashing on your screen. Over to the Ark Worship Team. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, as we come into your presence this morning. Lord, we invite you, we welcome you to come and have your way among us, Lord. Lord, as we lift up these songs and bless your name this morning, Lord, we pray that you'll come and minister to us right here, right in our houses, O Lord, and speak to us and change our lives. This is our prayer in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's join along and bless the name of the Lord with few songs. Lift his name on high.
Let the praises ring. Let the praises ring. Let's joyfully come into his courts and with thanksgiving as the scripture says. We'll sing another song and lift his name on high.
Lord, we choose to bless you this morning and we choose to give you thanks. Lord, you receive all the praise and the glory. This morning, we invite you once again that you would speak to us and change our lives. We open our ears to listen through your word, to your word, Lord. Now speak to us and change us, Lord. We give it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Good morning, church. I am here to announce the events of this week at ARC. Please note our service timing. Tamil service, 8 a.m. English service, 10 a.m. ARC Arise, our youth service, at 12 noon on Zoom. Other services on Zoom are Victory Kids, 11.30 a.m. Twins, 11.45 a.m. Twin service, 3.30 p.m. and Hindi service at 5 p.m. Please contact with us on the number given on the screen for Zoom links. First September, which is on Wednesday, we have our dawn service from 5.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. in the church, and it will also be telecast online. We encourage you to be part of our Discipleship Connect group. It is where we come closer as a family to pray, meditate on the Word of God, and rejoice together. For any further information, please get in touch with our church office. Amen. Yes, it's a joyful time, rather a very blessed time to welcome every of our newcomers, especially uh, those of you those who are joining with us for the very first time. We would love to take this time to pray with you and pray for you. It's a joy to have you with us. Let's pray together. I request every one of the church, why don't we join along and bless our new people, shall we pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you thanks for every, every elders, every brothers and sisters and children, those who are joining along with us for the very first time to worship you. Oh Lord, we pray your blessing over every lives. Take care of every details of every life, every needs. Wipe every tear, so God. We speak your healing. We, we speak your mighty hand to take over. You be exalted and you be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank and we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Yes, as we welcome the newcomers. It's important news. It's a great news, rather. We have... Uh, around 11 new people, those who have committed their lives for baptism. And actually speaking, according to our calendar, they were to be baptized today on the 29th. And because of the lockdown, we have post postponed the uh, baptism, but we are not going to postpone much and beyond. Rather, we are having it on the weekday. On Thursday, 11 of our people are getting baptized and it is our responsibility it's our call to stand with these brethren and we should pray for them for God to bless them anoint them fulfill his purpose in and through them amen so I'm reading out the names of uh, these 11 wonderful people and we're going to be praying for them shall we shall we get ready to pray for them so here are these 11 people number one is Gauri Balke she's going to get baptized Rekha Balke Karen Samuel Peter Josper Kingston Auntie Gladys Christie brother Wimmel's mother-in-law Yuvraj brother Bala Balachander Sri Lakshmi Sean and Janet 11 of our people you all know Sean is my first son he's also committed himself, he also committed himself for baptism so shall we take some time why don't we pray for these wonderful people for God to take over their lives God to give uh, new beginnings and they will live a life with Lord of convictions and with Lord of compelling of the Holy Spirit shall we pray for them and I will also request you encourage you please come and join in on Thursday it's going to be some wonderful time shall we pray father in the name of Jesus we give you thanks for all our dear people oh father every sons and daughters here in this house we bless them as they have committed for uh, to this important decision of baptism Lord we pray that lead them speak to them minister to them let them live life for God, pleasing you, exalting your name, and you're able to do wonders in and through them, O oh God, Father. Give them unto you. Take care of every other details. And we also take this time to bless all our church people. Take care of every details of every life. 
and we give you thanks for all the needs of the church you're able to meet to oh God every needs of media you're able to meet to oh God yes Lord every needs of Rakshik and Petras you're able to meet come Lord take over reign over and you be glorified Jesus mighty name Amen 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 thank you very much a uh, great we have one more good news today we are having a marriage in our church and Gauri is going to wed Venkatesh whom we call as Sabari and today I'm bringing the second band reading of Gauri and Venkatesh yes I Jay Kumar pastor of the Ark Victory Church hereby published the second band of uh, marriage of Miss Gauri Shashikant Balke daughter of Mr. Shashikant Balke and Rekha Balke residing at Janta uh, Vasant uh, Pune Maharashtra with Mr. Venkatesh Gunasekar son of Mr. Gunasekar Narayana Swami and Shanti Gunasekar residing at Pallikarne Chennai on the 7th September 2021 at Blue Bay Resort ECR Chennai so if any just member of our church have any just cause or any just impediment why these two wonderful people should not get together in the holy matrimony you can declare it by writing it to me personally amen this is the second time of asking if there is nothing i will encourage everyone let's pray for Venkatesh and Gauri for them to have a blessed marriage life Amen. This is the second time of asking and the wedding is on the 7th September 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Fine. With this, can we go ahead and bless the Lord with our tithes and offerings and our thanksgiving? Shall we just go ahead and generously worship the Lord with our offerings? And uh, as, we, as we get ready, I will request Carolina to lead us in the prayer. Amen. Good morning, church. This is the time for us to give our tithes and offering. I would like to show a passage from Bible, Mark chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how people put money into the treasury, and many were rich put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw into two mites which make a quadrant. So he called his disciples to himself and said to them, Assuredly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all those who are given to the treasury, for they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had her whole livelihood. Yes, uh, in, uh, when we see this passage, we could see Jesus sat opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury. It is all about how we put and not how much we put. God sees our heart. God loves a cheerful giver. Let us give cheerfully to God whatever may be, uh, even if it is money, mind, time, anything that we give unto God, let us give us give cheerfully to him so this is what is God expecting from us and when we see the poor widow here she gave the entire livelihood having faith that God will take care of her need so so that is the best example that we'll have to follow let us give God the best and let us give it give it cheerfully so you can uh, give the tithes and offering through NIFT or the QR code that is flashing on the screen or through GPay so let us play, pray now Shall we pray, church? Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the time you have given to us. Jesus, thank you for all that you have blessed us, Lord. You have blessed the hands that labor, oh Lord Jesus. Even as we did that unto you, Lord, give us a heart to do unto you cheerfully, Lord. Oh, yes, she is not just grumbling or mumbling, but Lord, give us to do unto you cheerfully, Lord. Bless our hands that labor, bless our barns, and let it overflow with your goodness, oh Lord. Bless every need of the church. Thank you, for you shall supply all the needs of the church, oh Lord. We make this prayer in your name. Amen and Amen. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts sun full like clouds before you, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away.
steps of happy rest You are the one who saves You are the one who saves You are the one whose hands lift us from the grave You are the light of life The everlasting day You are the one who takes all our sins away Praise God and glory be to his name. Yes, before even getting into God's word, I have a request from each and every one of you. You know, this pandemic has been not, not it, it's not been good in many ways. And uh, for us and even for Anjali and me, it, it's not been good, especially in the area of our health. Uh, Anjali went from back to back surgery. She was she, had, she was tested positive by God's grace. She's keeping well now. And I've been having this gout attacks uh, and this retinal vein um, occlusion where uh, one of the vein bursts and uh, I kind of lose my eyesight. And I'm, I've been going through certain treatment before, but I stopped during the time of the pandemic. And so we decided to go through this 10 days of Ayurvedic treatment uh, for my eyes, which I had gone through before. Uh, I'm going through that. And not only that, uh, even after Anjali's surgery, uh, I, we got some medical counsel that it is good to go through this treatment. And we are looking forward to bounce back with good health and to serve the Lord with all that we have. So I request your earnest prayers. Thank you very much. Can we pray and can we ask God to minister unto us? Now, during this kind of uh, times when we are digitally uh, joining along in the service, we can very easily get distracted. But can we commit ourselves not to be distracted for the next half an hour or so and allow God to minister to us? Shall we pray? Father, we love you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And this morning, Lord, we welcome you once again. Speak into our hearts, speak into our spirits, take over this time. Holy Spirit of God, you reign and you be glorified. We give you the praise, we give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank and we pray. Amen. Amen. As we get into the word, let's just watch this small clipping. And with this, let's get into the word of God. Amen. Into the beauty of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never called Peter a sinner. Jesus Christ tells Peter, throw your nets. This guy tried to be smart, tried to be calculative, tried to be a typical intelligent fisherman. Instead of obeying completely, he threw a net. The net was breaking. He called for his partners. He saw that so many fish could be caught caught the fish and after that instead of thanking Jesus for the catch the Bible says he falls on his knees and he says depart from me for I am a sinful man I am a wretched man and that is the place Jesus leads him to his call there were times he still failed you know but his faith did not fail Peter stood strong church there is power in partnership how are you leading your life 
great now as the clipping goes yes this is the incident from the gospel of luke chapter 5 we have been hearing on this just uh, you know to hear a little bit about it here is peter and his partners those were disappointed jesus comes and uh, he asked uh, Peter to throw out the nets into the deep. And Peter says, all night we toiled, we caught nothing. But at your word, I will throw a net, one net. And he threw the net and he caught so much of fish that the net was breaking. And after that, he shouts for help from his partners. That is James and John. They come over and both the boats are full of fishes, so much so that the boats were going to sink almost and this was a miracle now the scripture says in Luke chapter 5 verses 8 onwards we will read the scripture says when Simon Peter saw it he fell down at Jesus' feet saying depart from me for I am a sinful man O Lord for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken and so also were James and John the son of Zebedee who were partners with Simon and Jesus said to Simon do not be afraid from now on you will catch men so when they had brought their boats to land they forsook all and followed him think about it a little bit Peter John James these guys they toiled all night and they caught nothing Jesus comes on the way does a great miracle provides them with abundance of fish and so their needs are met not even just their needs are met beyond even their needs things are getting taken care now now what should have been peter's response what should have been james and john's response they should have said a big thank you to jesus and not only that probably because of this they would have want to know more about jesus would have want to get closer to jesus Many a times when our needs are met, that's how we are, isn't it? But not only that, Peter falls at the feet of Jesus. He realizes that Jesus is someone who is very awesome. He realizes his lack. He realizes his small mindedness and he says, you know, get away from me for I am a sinner. But when Jesus comforts him, the Bible says they leave all those abundance, the fish, and everything they forsook all they followed after Jesus so so here is Jesus picking up his first set of partners to so go ahead and form the inner team of Peter James and John so now that is what is happening and from here on starts the school of discipleship for Peter and he actually has a roller coaster ride there are quite a few incidents where he was very good there were some incidents where he responded in a very stupid way but overall God worked with this man went ahead and became a great one of the greatest apostles ever lived on the face of earth so on one such time when Peter John and James along with Jesus when they were there in the Mount of Transfiguration Peter the big mouth unnecessarily spoke something not knowing what he was talking and then the once when they were all caught in the storm and when Jesus was walking on the water he asked if it is you can I also walk on the water Peter is one disciple who walked on the water and yes he gets afraid in between and he was going to sink and Jesus pulls him out and you know takes him forward in one incident when Jesus takes them to Caesarea Philippine Jesus asked who do people say that I am they all respond saying oh some say you're John the Baptist you're Elijah you're one of the prophets and all that but Jesus looks intensely at them and say but who do you say that I am and for that Peter responds you are the Messiah you're the Christ now Jesus responds back to Peter in in the gospel of Matthew chapter 16 verse 17 he says blessed are you Simon Barjona for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father who is in heaven amen so Jesus actually appreciates him Jesus commends him and after that immediately the following verses Jesus was 
trying to tell them in what way he is going to die, what kind of a death is going to come to him, how he was going to be so, going to go through the suffering and the crucifixion and all that. Peter takes Jesus aside while he was hearing all this and he tells me, uh, Jesus, Jesus, all this shouldn't happen to you. Jesus looks at the same Peter, Simon Peter and says, get thee behind me, Satan. So here is Peter going through a roller coaster ride. But you know what? Peter thought within himself that he had great love for Jesus. Let's look at this incident. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 26 verses 33 to 35, the scripture says, Peter answered and said to him, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, Assuredly I say to you that this night before the roaster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter doesn't receive that. He responds back to Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Even if I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. More so with Peter. He said, Jesus, if everyone stumbles also, I will not stumble. If everyone denies you also, I will not deny you. I'm ready to die with you, die for you. That was Peter's statement. And he thought, probably honestly, he'll be one such person. But you know what? When Jesus was arrested, when Jesus was getting beaten, mocked, and people slapped, at his, uh, slapped him and did, uh, spat on him, and when Jesus' body was bleeding, Peter was at a distance watching all that was happening and probably he could have thought within himself if he was the Messiah all this shouldn't happen to him and so what is happening here is while he was watching all that was happening from a distance in the middle of the being with the crowd one of the person recognized Peter saying that he was with Jesus Peter refuses says no I do not know him then the scripture goes on to say I will want us to look into the scripture we will re revisit the side of uh, this kind of a scripture once again but please listen to the scripture the scripture says that in John chapter 18 verses 17 and 18 then the servant girl who kept the door said to Peter you're not also one of this man's disciples are you he said I am not now the servants and officers who had made a fire of coals stood there for it was cold and they warmed themselves and Peter stood with them and warmed himself when Peter was warming himself standing in the around the coal of fire the servant girl recognizes Peter Peter says I do not know him and once again another person recognizes and says yes he was with Jesus the Bible says he even goes ahead and curses but he doesn't accept he denies Jesus three times and immediately the roaster crows and Jesus looks at Peter now think about it dear people beloved of God many a times when you're doing good in life many a times when everything is taken care in your life when when you have your abundance and all that Many can come along and say, I will be with you. I will help you. I will support you. When they saw big things happening, many can want to join along with you. But when you go through suffering, when you go through pain, when you go through hurts, when, when, when you lose many things in life, there are times it's like a lonely battle. That is how the world is. Many a times, when people try to come and join with you, it can be colleagues, it can be you know, friends, it can be even friendships and closer relationships. They may not understand the purpose, they may not understand uh, the cost attached to it, but they will commit immediately. But true partnership takes a cost. This takes me to one of my first important statement, that partnership without getting a picture of the cost and partnership without understanding the purpose will not stand the test of fire you know when we go through test many will leave that was what was happening with jesus and even with 
you know Jesus and Peter and with even other disciples how are we doing are we only looking at the things outwardly are we only looking at the just the materialistic world are we able to understand the purpose of walking with Jesus are we able to understand the purpose of our life because trust me church in Christian life without death there is no life without sacrifice there is no fire and we need to understand that way back once in Baroda I think it is known as Vadodara now in Gujarat we were having our big festival I know uh, Dr. J. Seelan was organizing and th those days it was huge festivals I mean gospel festivals and there were more than one lakh plus people and I was one of the volunteers but you know what happened on the first day of the festival some uh, you know different group of people came inside they started throwing the handmade bombs onto the stage they started burning I mean the buses were burning and there was a chaos in that particular place and when all that was happening the whole meeting was shut I, I mean it was it was kind of shut and people were scattered everywhere there was crowd everywhere and many people the dignitaries those who were sitting in the stage they all even left they all even ran away and I was standing below the stage I could see my pastor Dr. Jason sitting in one corner keeping his hand over his head and the, that particular speaker for that day he was just speaking in tongues and he was just holding the mic and standing but there was chaos there many people ran away people I mean the crowd was you know very chaotic and during that time Dr. Jason came near to the end of the stage and he just called me up he said Jay can you please come up and I went and went ahead and stood at the entrance of the stage and he said Jay can you just look I'm not able to see properly can you can you see whether any people with uh, trying to do anything unnecessary is there anyone co coming towards the stage and all that and I tried to throw my eyes and see everything that was happening all I could see was even some of the people those were the leaders they were just taking their badge off and they were putting it inside their pocket they were acting as if they were just part of the crowd you know what when suffering comes when pain comes, when hurt comes we will know the true people who will stand with you and true partnership can take the globe with the gospel true partnership can change the world upside down but how are we doing and how is our life now coming back to Peter now Peter is stumbling he denies Jesus three times and third time the roaster crows and Jesus I mean Jesus looks at Peter with that bloodshed face is looking at Peter and Peter's eye gets locked with Jesus eye and the Bible goes on to say after which Peter goes ahead and weeps bitterly now what kind of look that would have been church According to me, yes, it wouldn't have been an angry look. It would have been surely a compassionate look. It, it could have been the look which said, yeah, Peter, didn't I tell you this? And Peter was convicted. But yes, Jesus went ahead. He was crucified. He died. Peter thought, probably my life is over. And Peter didn't understand the cost attached to the partnership with Jesus Christ. When initially when Jesus called him, probably didn't get anything out of it. He just followed Jesus thinking that I will have the best life of my days being with Jesus. Jesus tried to teach them with every other way. Yes, deny and then you have to live, carry the cross. Then comes life and all that. All these things didn't really get into them church true partnership demands a cost you know like the other illustration another once one more is when my father passed away and my father had gone to be with the Lord I was 24 then and my sister is like you know nine years younger to me and she was in a school days 
And so, so many people came to us and many men actually speaking came to us and say, Jay, consider me as your dad. Come and feel free to ask for any help and you know, uh, ask for any kind of a support and all that. But just within a few days, they went out and told even some of the people outside that, oh, this family is gone because he was the only breadwinner. My dad was the only breadwinner. This guy wants to serve the Lord and all that. There's nothing. This family is gone. That's how they went ahead and spoke. See, it is easy to say out of our lips, I will be your dad. I will, be, I will do this. I will do that. But you know, any divine partnership demands a cost. There is a cost attached to it. I just want to encourage you. You know, there is a cost attached in partnership. There is a cost attached in commitment. There is a cost attached in marriage. There is a cost attached in true relationships. And it's important for us to live that out. Now here again, coming back to Peter, you know how beautifully Jesus deals with Peter. Every time I go through this portion, you know, it blows me away. You know, in the world, it is said that to err is human, to forgive is divine. Many times as a Christian, we struggle to forgive and we carry the offenses and we say, yes, we should forgive. But you know, with Jesus, he went beyond forgiveness. Yes, to err is human, to forgive is divine, but Jesus not only forgave, but Jesus led uh, Peter to a sorrowful re repentance, which thereby brought a powerful restoration and finally strengthening the partnership. Now, how is Jesus dealing with this Peter? Peter thought everything is over. Peter thought, okay, he, he wept bitterly, but at, at one point, you could have thought, oh, that's it. I have to live with this guilt. But what happens? The life has to go on. Peter goes ahead and says, you know, I'm done. That's all Jesus is done and over and dusted. That's it. Now we have to take care of our life. So he goes ahead and he makes this very famous statement in the gospel of John chapter 21, verse three. The scripture says, I am going fishing and it doesn't stop there. That's where it is dangerous. They, they also said to him, we are, we are going with you also. And they went out immediately, got into the boat. And that night, they went to catch the fish. See, there are times we can walk away from our purpose, walk away from our call, which is not good. But the danger is when some of us Especially when we are in the leadership and all that. When we walk away from the call, walk away from the purpose, we carry the power to take a chunk with us. And that's what Peter was doing. Because he thought nothing good is going to happen here with Jesus. And I have to take care of myself. I have to take care of my life. And he says, I am going fishing. But you know what is happening here? Jesus died. Jesus was buried, but death couldn't hold him. Roman soldiers couldn't stop him. Grave couldn't contain him. And just as Jesus said, he rose up on the third day and he came out alive. And he appeared to many in many different forms to show that he is the Lord. He is the Christ and he is your Lord. You are thinking everything is over. You are thinking nothing good is going to come. You are thinking, yes, I've done a blunder. I've done the mistake. Uh, and you know, I've walked away and I'm a failure and all that. But Jesus just doesn't look at you as a failure at this point. But Jesus sees beyond the, even, your, uh, even your failure. In the Luke chapter 22 verse 32, Jesus looks at Peter before even anything could happen. He says, the devil has asked permission of you, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you return back, strengthen your brethren. Please hear this church. Peter failed, but somewhere his faith was still there. The faith did not fail. There was probably a mustard seed of faith somewhere inside of his heart. Jesus, uh, Peter denied Jesus. Peter said, I'm going fishing. He failed terribly. But the faith was there. You could have failed, but you have Jesus inside of you. You have faith inside of you. Now Jesus goes ahead 
and starts dealing with Peter. You know, many say Jesus is a good storyteller. But I would go ahead and say he's a good storyteller. He's a great story creator. And he's surely a history maker. Why do I say this? Now these guys have gone fishing and they go for a night where they're toiling all night. Now Jesus walks by the same sea. And as he walks by the same sea, like before in Luke chapter 5, they toiled all night, they caught nothing. Once more, they catch nothing. Jesus brings back the same kind of a scene. And Jesus looks at them, shouts at them, and is asking, children, are you having any food? What he's asking is, guys, did you catch any fish? They come back with the same story and they say, no, Lord, we toiled all night. We caught nothing. Now, what Jesus should have done, think about it. You know, these guys had, they have betrayed, they have denied Jesus, they left Jesus, they ran away. In the most crucial time of Jesus' life, they ran away. Jesus should have confronted them. Said, hey guys, you went, you went ahead and you did what you shouldn't have done. Go ahead and suffer. You should have told that. But he was so merciful. He was so gracious. He went ahead and he said, okay, what do you guys want? You, got, you guys want money? You guys want fishes? You guys want abundance? You guys, what do you guys want? You guys want this needs to be met? Come on. I can even provide beyond that. And he says, why don't you take your net and throw it on the right hand side? And they go ahead and throw it on the right hand side. And the scripture says, they caught a multitude of fish, abundance of fish again. When this was happening, Peter is asking this question, is it the Lord there? They say, oh yes. And the Peter takes off his outer garment plunges into the sea, swims, and before anyone could reach the shore, he goes ahead and stands in front of Jesus with a wet, half-nude body. Now he waits for others to come. And then in John chapter 21, verses 9 and 10, listen to this carefully. Then as soon as they had come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there. Do you remember the fire of coals? They saw the fire of coals that just few days before in front of this fire of coals. There was someone who was denying Jesus. So Jesus is recreating that scene. The fire of coals there and fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Think about Peter, what he must have been going through. He must have been devastated here. He is just not expressing it. And so, but Jesus is not confronting. Jesus is not angry. He should have been rightfully, but he's not angry. He's not confronting. He knows that we are mere humans. And Jesus is asking, guys, you got some fish, right? Bring it on. Let's have some breakfast together. And then Jesus brings Peter in front of the coal fire. They're having their breakfast. They're having their meal together. And during that time, Jesus is looking at Peter. Jesus is picking on Peter. Jesus singles out Peter. And Jesus is asking Peter, Peter, do you love me? Now in English, it comes very simply that as if Jesus is asking three times, do you love me? And Peter is also saying three times, yes, Lord, I love you. No, that's not the actual truth. In Greek, what Jesus is actually asking is, do you agape me? Which means, do you have that unconditional love towards me? You know, with no strings attached, anything, your needs are met, your needs are not met, but still, do you love me? Will you love me? For that Peter actually responds, the English version says, yes, Lord, I love you. The actual translation says, yes, Lord, I fill you, you 
I don't agape you, but I fill you. You fill you. You fill you is a different kind of a love. A love that is out of feelings. You know, I feel like loving when my needs are met. I love when my needs are not met. I'm not able to love. He's acknowledging that fact. See, he's devastated. He's broken. Jesus is leading him through repentance and restoration. He says, "I only fill you." you. Jesus says, "Feed my lambs." Then Jesus goes ahead and again asks once more the question, "Do you agape me?" Peter says, "Actually, he says, no, Lord." I only fill you, you. You're expecting agape from me, but you know who I am. You know how wretched I am. I only fill you, you. I love you when my things are taken care of. And I feel like that's a kind of a love, Lord. I don't agape you. Jesus says, tend my sheep. Now Jesus shifts the gear and he says, okay, Peter, do you fill your me? Okay, you love me only when you feel like. That's okay, Peter. He says, yes, Lord. I mean, the Bible actually says that he's, he's actually irritated. He's getting angry. He's like, yes, Lord. I'm just only fill you, you. Peter goes ahead and says, feed my sheep. And Peter is getting restored. And later on, he's filled by the Holy Spirit. The one who denied Jesus. Partners for the purpose of the gospel becomes one of the greatest apostles ever. And he was ready to give his life for Jesus. I mean, this is the history of Peter. We all know. We must know, I think. We, we, we must know. He went ahead and told the people, those who are going to be, um, you know, killing him. He says, my master died like this on the cross. I don't want to be dying in the same way. Crucify me upside down. The church history says Peter was crucified upside down. By his life, he proved that he not only filled Jesus, but he came into that agape love. And he had that divine partnership. And they went ahead, changed the world upside down. Isn't the life of Peter an amazing journey? From the time he started and to the time he finished, yes, he stumbled, he fell away, he had roller coaster ride, but he had a good finish. But at the same time, it's amazing the way Jesus dealt with Peter, isn't it? In our lives also, as Jesus said, I prayed for you that your faith should not fail. In our life also, first is taking God, uh, taking everything to God in prayer. Another thing is, yes, we are all human, we err, we do mistakes, but it's important that we realize, we repent and we come back. God is able to restore our life. Our life need not to be lived with guilt and with condemnation. He is able to rebuild, He is able to restore, replenish your life. So let's hold on to God. Let's have a great divine partnership, a covenant relationship with God he is able to take you and bless you and use you for his glory. Shall we pray? Can we look unto the Lord? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks for this amazing life of Peter. We give you thanks, uh, oh Lord, there's so much of uh, truth and uh, so much of uh, humanness and uh, the divinity all coming together in order for Peter's life to be lived for your glory. Lord, we give you thanks that you love us. We give you thanks that you take care of, rather, you're concerned of every of our lives. You're concerned of our decisions. You're concerned even when we fall, we fail. Oh Lord, we give you thanks. You're able to rebuild, restore, replenish, take over every lives, wipe the tears of God. Let not any of our people live in condemnation. Any of our people live in guilt of God. But at the same time, let not any of our people live in compromise, but rather a repented lifestyle turning back to you. Take over every lives and you be glorified, O oh God. We bless all of our people. Take care of every details. You be exalted. We worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank and we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Can we say the grace together? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Lord, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all till our Jesus Christ comes back in His glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you and are very much praying for you. Yes, remember this Thursday is the baptism service. Please try to come and join along for it shall be a blessing for our people. Thank you. God bless. Mm -hmm.